Hello, hello, everybody. My name is Genevieve. I'm a singer, songwriter, music producer, and I like to make informational videos sometimes. This one might be a little more opinionated, but I still think there's something to take from it. We're gonna dive into how the music industry kind of overlaps with the social media industry. I like to start a lot of videos off asking you guys a question to kind of get you started on thinking about the subject matter. I wanna ask you guys, when you discover new artists or new songs, where do you usually first hear them? You answered yet? Answer. Anyways, a lot of you, I bet, are probably saying something like TikTok, SoundCloud, Instagram, and that is exactly what we're gonna be talking about today. Social media has created a great cost-effective way for musicians to be able to market themselves and to have all the control over what parts they market and how they market. Back in ye old days, Freddie Mercury didn't have MySpace or whatever those earlier social media platforms were. Back then, you had to have a contract with a record label and those people would get you the managers, those people would get you the marketing and promotion people and they would kind of do this work. Nowadays, it is so different. Me personally, as a musician, I'm a musician. I'm not an influencer. I'm not a social media presence. I sing, I write songs, I produce, I play a few instruments. I'm not Charlie D'Amelio. And I don't wanna try to be. I think that social media is so much fun, but that's it. It's just fun. I don't wanna have to take it super seriously in order to get recognized. Because again, it's really bad for your mental health to place a worth on yourself and your music based on how many likes your video gets, how many comments you have, shares, how many followers you got. I've never wanted to care about that stuff. And it's not just how I think about social media and how it affects my music, but it's also the time that it takes. When you think about the algorithm of all of these apps, they typically look for high quality videos with high quality audio, good backgrounds, not messy, good editing. And I'll be quite honest with you guys, this video and the one before it, it might have been about five minutes, but it takes me an average of four hours to get these videos together. Not only is it because of the re-recording, the fact that I don't know why, but suddenly the last take I did that I thought was perfect got deleted. It's editing for a really long time, cutting out the silence, making the captions. It's a lot of work. You know what I would rather spend my time doing? Music. You know, cause that's what I do. And what's worse is the fact that you can't just use social media to advertise your music. In order for your music to be recognized on social media, it has to come in a package deal with who you are as a person and your character. A big reason why people have found success with their music on social media isn't just because the music was good, but also because people connected with the artist, you know, with all these funny videos that they would make, all the outtakes of their music and stuff like that. And giving people a personal look into your life or even having an alternate persona both take a lot of hard work. What parts do you wanna show people? What do you think people will like about you? What do you think they don't wanna see? Having to think about all of these things just to get music recognized is a lot. And it's a little overwhelming, but you can't really do without it. I, as the audience and the viewer, have dealt with cases where I really like somebody's music, so I hit that follow button. But every time I scrolled through, you know, my following page, I'd hear the same song by that person and it would just be them marketing the song again, 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 or marketing a song that's coming out soon of theirs. And while there's nothing inherently bad about that, you know, it's the same thing over and over again and people get bored of it. I got bored of it. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. And that jumps into another point that I have. A lot of artists nowadays and producers are banking on that one moment in a song that people are gonna remember and recognize. With the Taylor Swift song, Anti-Hero, she says, it's me, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. You think of that line and how many uses it can have 
in the social media realm, how many videos can be made with that sound. And although I don't think she wrote it for social media, I'm saying that nowadays a lot of people are trying to make sure that they have that moment somewhere in the song. And what's worse is this isn't just something that could have been helpful for artists, but it's something that now record labels are expecting from people. I remember a few months back, Halsey had posted a TikTok basically saying that her label was going to do something or not let her do something if she didn't get this many followers on TikTok or this many likes. Something about like not having enough of something like that on social media and it's just like the fact that the social media realm has to collide with the music industry is a little disheartening because again us as musicians we love music that's what we love to do we didn't choose to want to be a social media personality but on a better note let's talk about what the benefits of social media are first things first like i mentioned before it's very cost effective if you want to get into music it's not nearly as difficult as it was back then where you had to be accepted by record labels get a contract where you had to sell some rights away for your music and had to give money to a man to promote your music not even knowing if it's going to succeed or not nowadays you can kind of gauge what people like and what they don't like based on a 15 second post with some of your favorite parts of your song. And it gives the audience a portal to connect with you. If you want feedback directly from the consumers, you can now get that. The other thing that I think is pretty cool is the fact that we're seeing more artists take up the spots on the Billboard Hot 100. While it's true that Taylor Swift and Ariana Grande, The Weeknd, and you know, a plethora of other stars in the music industry are always probably going to have a place there at the top. Even just being in 98th place because your song did really well on TikTok is great. I'm seeing a lot more small artists get recognized and are being granted a place on the charts where they deserve. There's a lot more new names that we're seeing instead of Ariana Grande, The Weeknd, Tyler the Creator, Tyler the Creator, Ariana Grande, Selena Gomez, all these artists being repeated. I think it's nice that we're now able to give a voice to the smaller artists. Not to mention, it's now way easier to tell people about your concerts and where they can find tickets. And that helps bring people into shows and that's revenue. So as you just heard me talk about, there are a lot of positive and negative things about the overlap between social media and the music industry. And I think in the near future, music is going to rely even more on digital media. Like I said, this video was a little bit more opinionated, but if you agreed with any of my points, if you want to make some points of your own, please feel free to comment them. I love hearing what you guys have to say. If you want to hear my music or anything like that, or find any of my other social links, those will be linked in my bio. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.